year. One of my favorite subjects is the human soul. One of my favorite things to talk about when I'm just sitting around hanging out with my friends is that mystical part of you and me that makes us who we are and transcend even what science can tell us because what I know for sure, we are more than our bodies. If you have tuned into our television show in the last few months, you've likely heard me talk about what has, I, I would have to say at this point, I think has become a global phenomenon. A lot of people have been talking about the universal law of attraction. And it's been packaged very well, I think, in a new marketing form, because the truth is there have been world philosophers for years who've talked about the idea that we are more than our bodies and there's more to our lives than what we can actually see and that really that what we are here is really an illusionary plane. Now everybody's calling that the secret. The secret is in fact a universal law. I'm really, as I've said on my show, very excited because for years, for me, the real purpose of the Oprah Winfrey Show, when I first figured out that I'd been given this opportunity to speak in people's homes every day and that that was more than just a show, I understood that it was about teaching responsibility, about letting people know that you are responsible for your life. And so for years, I've been talking about some of the principles involved in the secret and that is that the choices that you make every day and even more so than the choices the way you think and then make the choices has everything to do with what your life is and so in essence you are creating your reality every day i have believed that and seen it work in my own life in so many ways so i'm really excited that the secret has at least opened consciousness in such a way that other people have been able to at least see that light that moment that says you know what I am more than my body. There are no accidents. Everything is happening for a reason. And I do have a lot of control over it. Many of you may not know that there is a secret behind the secret and that for over 20 years, Esther Hicks and her husband Jerry have been spreading the word of that so-called secret. That's really not a secret because so many people have known it. They've been spreading that the word of that to thousands upon thousands and thousands and thousands of people, teaching this art of allowing your natural well-being to come forth through the law of attraction and using the law of attraction to create a more purposeful life. It was based on her knowledge, she says, of, of this universal law that she was invited to be a primary contributing expert on the secret Esther Hicks was. Maybe you saw the original secret tape. Tape. The original secret tape. You're on that tape, Esther. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Welcome, first of all. Hi. Hi. Thanks. And so you're on the, the first tape, and until probably, let's see, last weekend I saw a tape, and you were not on it. You were first on the tapes, and now you're not on the tapes. <laughs> Can you tell us why you were on the tapes, and now you're not on the tapes? <laughs> well, Rhonda originally came to us. Rhonda Burns, the Rhonda creator Burns. of The Secret. Yes. Darling girl. Yeah. And she was on a... a cruise or a two with us where you're teaching this law of attraction we do like okay. 50 seminars a year and okay. some cruises and so I'd heard that she was there even though I hadn't met her okay I so, clarify that just to say oh we were cruising together <laughs> no there were a lot of us okay. a lot of us not just the two <laughs> what are you wearing I don't know are you going to the beach later okay <laughs> clarify that. so anyway uh, they came on board and they videotaped our entire week-long cruise the whole Rhonda and her crew her crew there were a lot of them nice nice Australians and then we spent one day in another little room with a green screen behind and she interviewed Jerry and I and Abraham Abraham is the entity that you Abraham is the weird part of me <laughs> Abraham is the non-physical I'm glad you said it <laughs> everybody else thinks that <laughs> Abraham is the non-physical entity that you use the word that to me they are non-physical consciousness so okay. I quiet my mind and I tap into their vibration and then I speak what they say okie dokie yeah, I know <laughs> <laughs> now okay I'm gonna come back to that yes. but so when Rhonda Burns and her crew who were filming the secret at the time started taping you is that what we see on the original tape yes and that's Abraham that's Abraham speaking yes. there yes. And so when I read your book, yours and Jerry's book on the law of attraction, which I just noticed is on the bestseller list last it week. It is. Isn't that nice? I think that's very nice. Yes. So when I read that book, what I realized is that so much of what is said on and in the secret, the tape, is almost directly 
from your book. Well, that book, we just produced that book, but it's almost a literal transcription of the early recordings we did. Uh -huh. The first recording being Law of Attraction, the second one being the Law of Deliberate Creation, the third one being the Law of Allowing. And Rhonda had been listening to those recordings. She said to us one day, she, in fact, I really thank her for the idea about producing the book because she said to Jerry one day, Jerry, I've been listening to these recordings over and over and over again, and every time I hear them, I hear something more from them. I think you should put that into a book form. And Jerry said, I've been meaning to do it for a long time. He had a lot of it already pulled together. And Jerry, so, your husband? Jerry, my husband. Yes. So that's how that book came about was the Law of Attraction, the Law of Attraction yeah. book. For those of you who have felt you know, stimulated, inspired by The Secret, I would have to say that the Law of Attraction really opens that door further in such a way that you begin to truly understand the principle behind the law of attraction and how it works in almost every phase of your life. I know you believe it works in every phase of our lives? I do. I believe that the law of attraction, that everything is about that. And once you understand the law of attraction and you are looking not only at your own life but anybody else's that you have, you know, that you're up close enough to really know what's going on, you can see that everybody gets exactly what they're offering vibrationally. Well, you know, the criticism of The Secret, which and I, I'm using the words interchangeably today, but clearly I know the difference. The Secret is, as I was saying earlier, I think, and you know, there are people who say, well, no, is it marketing? I think I saw some article. Is it marketing or is it real? Well, the truth is, it is marketing. It has been marketed and packaged in such a way that people, um, you know, of, of our generation, of this time, can receive it in a way that perhaps they couldn't receive it with other philosophers or, you know? Yes, and, and because of Law of Attraction, because so many people are asking, our contrasting experiences are making us ask more powerfully than ever before, and so more people are asking. I think that watching what Rhonda accomplished with The Secret was maybe the best example I've ever seen of someone holding steadily to a thought or an idea mm -hmm. and not letting anyone divert them from their idea and law of attraction. Now you see things that have manifested that she was talking about. Oh, things like it was going to be a worldwide phenomenon and people around the world would benefit from it and everyone would be uplifted by it. I think that what happened with The Secret is a really good example of someone deliberately applying law of attraction and in fairness to Rhonda or anyone who's trying to put such a big idea out in such a short period of time it isn't possible to explain how to make that happen she studied for a long 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 time before she began applying it you know mm -hmm. and so I hear criticism you know we get so much correspondence from people who've been studying our work for a long time who don't like how it doesn't say enough or don't like how now it's beginning to be diverted into different directions it's kind of turning in the wind just a little bit Jerry and I always say in fairness what a, what a wonderful thing this is what a wonderful icebreaker it is and anybody who wants to know more there are a lot of people teaching what to do yes I think it's exciting that we're at a time where people begin to ask those questions about what is my life? It's so exciting to me that people are beginning to understand that they can do it themselves. It's all about self-empowerment. Okay, well let's go to some of the criticism immediately because I thought when I first watched The Secret, I was excited about it because I thought, oh wow, this is great because people are going to realize that things aren't just happening out of order, right. that things are really very much happening in order. Mm -hmm. And then I think the criticism has been, well, if things are happening in order, if you're really attracting everything into your life, then when you have cancer, you attracted that? These are questions I really want you to put to Abraham because they explain it so much better. Those are hard questions. But everything that everyone is living is coming in response to their vibrational output. But most people don't know what they're doing. Okay, even children, even children. So bad things happen to children, children who are innocent, children who don't know, mm -hmm. children who don't know about their vibrational output. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like we're offering a vibration whether we know that we are or not, mm -hmm. and we learn our vibration. I, I hear Abraham say that even when you're in your mother's womb, you're picking up on her vibration because of how she feels in her life. And when you are born as that little baby, you're born into an environment where people around you feel a certain way. We, we see it even as we move about this nation, that there are neighborhoods that you can just feel how those people feel and their lives reflected. And then we see neighborhoods that you can just feel how those 
most people feel and their lives reflect it and so I don't think anybody's saying that you know Abraham says it's and Abraham is the the higher consciousness Abraham, entity that you channel Abraham's the broader perspective Abraham okay. is source energy the the way source energy coming from the source and we all have access to it yes and through a process of meditation I managed to quiet my own resistance enough that my own vibration raised so that I tuned into them well, well uh, this is the thing yeah. I know you've agreed to be here because I said to you I said when they were gonna get you here I said tell her please she's gonna have to come on several shows just to come back because there is no way I'm gonna get, be able to get all my questions out Thanks. in one session so uh, I think in our next session I certainly want you to to channel Abraham but before you do that for everybody who's listening right now and you're going what sounding <laughs> weird to me Oprah very weird Ola um, I wanted you to tell people how absolutely normal you used to be <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really funny is you used that to be so normal we think we're normal now in fact Jerry was laughing about this this morning that somebody was talking about the weirdness of this and it doesn't seem weird to us because we've been doing it for so long it's hard for me to remember what life was like before I had this connection with Abraham. And how did the connection start? Jerry had been looking for ways to uplift people long before he even met me. Mm -hmm. So he really had that going on with him. And someone... Uplift like motivational uh, speaking? Not, not, Jerry was never a motivator. He was more an inspirer in that he always looked for strength in people and then reflected it back to them. Okay. So he found a book in a library one day written by Jane Roberts. Is this called, the Seth book? Seth book. Yeah, I read all the Seth books. And so Jerry's reading the Seth books and I was afraid of them. They just seemed weird to me. Yeah. And so he read them in his private time and and that is so interesting you say that because I, I I used to read them I was reading them back in the late 80s I think it was mm -hmm. and then one time I got I just started to get weirded out by them and I removed them from my shelf because I didn't want Seth speaking to me when I got up in the middle of the night to pee well I don't know I don't know I think what made me feel strange about it there was a very odd looking picture on the back of the book yes and it just kind of and so uh, so ooh, Jerry was why yeah Jerry was wise enough not to push it at me he just read them and enjoyed them and then every now and again he'd say something to me from one of them and I would say well that makes sense to me until in time I became more interested in the message and not so freaked out by the, the way the me yeah. message came and so then we decided that we were going to try to find these people and meet with them because now we were brimming with questions yeah and so we were going to meet them and then like days after we'd made the decision we were going to try to find Jane and Rob so okay. that we could meet Seth. They're the people who channeled Seth. Right. Okay. They never use that word though. I don't even like that word because it means so many different things but anyway, and it makes us think you're weird. It, that, that it does do that. Yeah, uh -huh. and, and okay. I'm, but anyway so we were in a little sandwich shop next to a bookstore and a person said to us just out of the blue have you read any of the Seth material which was odd because we had not told a soul. That so we you're were, just standing in a shop and then somebody else we were that. eating a sandwich and this man just said that to us and we said yes as a matter of fact we have been and he said did you know Jane Roberts is dead well that was shocking to me and upsetting I hadn't heard it and I felt like somebody had told me that my sister was dead and I didn't know it it, it had that kind of an impact but then we thought well no point in trying to find them because now we can't meet Seth and so within days good friends and business partners in uh, Phoenix came to us and they said we've got a tape we want you to hear and we said they were acting weird and I said what is it and they said well it's channeled well we didn't know what channeled meant we said what's that and they because what were you doing in your life because I, I mean I, I just am trying to establish this because were you the kind of couple that you're hanging out with other couples where they're going to channelers and no nothing like that no we were we, we Jerry was already financially successful so to tell you the truth mostly what we were doing is finding a good place to eat every day and shopping I mean that was sort of the way our life mostly was nice yeah oh that's yeah. nice we're a lot busier now what does that feel like <laughs> Just be able to uh, it's a distant memory for me too really but, but anyway so they they gave us this recording and we listened to it and it was another woman who was speaking for another Theo so are you saying that these things are just happening unfolding unfolding yeah it just like law of attraction does once you get on a wavelength then other things like that come to you so I absolutely get that and I know people are listening right now and you've seen I mean just the other day I was thinking about something thinking about something I walk into my office I open the door and that's what everybody in the room was talking right. about exactly yeah 
Yeah, so, I see that. So we visited with Theo. I wasn't sure I wanted to go. It was a beautiful home, no weird stuff going on. Theo relaxed, changed her consciousness the way she spoke it, and Theo began speaking to us. So you weren't I, weirded out? I was prepared to be weirded out okay. and expected to be. But the feeling of it was the most loving experience that I had ever experienced. And you believed it immediately? I didn't know what it was, but I believed it was good. I'm talking to Esther Hicks, who, along with her husband, Jerry Hicks, their author of a, a book that's now on the bestsellers list called The Law of Attraction. It is really, if I may say, the secret behind the secret, because they talk about law of attraction in depth. And Rhonda Burns went to them when she was preparing The Secret. So continue. I'm just trying to find out how Esther came to be Esther, who's channeling. That's a word right. I use because it's the it's most... all right. Most people okay. do. Okay. Channeling Abraham, which he's agreed to do for us on next week's show. But go ahead. So Jerry has all of these questions that he's asking. He has a lifetime of questions saved up for Theo. And I didn't say a word. I just sat in amazement as I listened to the dialogue back and forth. And then I said, I want to go back tomorrow because now I have questions. So we made another appointment. We went back the next day. And I said, what can we do to more effectively achieve our goals? And Theo said, meditate and affirmations and gave us a wonderful affirmation and when she said meditate we were both put off by it because that just seemed weird to us I thought of people lying on beds of nails or walking on hot coals or or people standing at the airport standing on one foot with their hand out and yeah. so I said what do you mean meditate and Theo said sit in a quiet room and wear comfortable clothing and focus on your breathing and when your mind wanders and it will just focus back on your breathing again then the tape recorder clicked off, my time is up, and there was a girl in the room, her name was Stevie, I'll never forget her, and she said, well, do you have one last question? Because she could see I was a little frustrated that my time was up, and she said, like, do you want to know who your spiritual guide is? Well, I would have never asked that because I had never heard that term. But What year was this? This was 1984. Okay, yeah. So I said, yeah, sounded good. Who is my spiritual guide? And Theo hesitated. I thought, oh, no, this is bad news. <laughs> I, I thought maybe my spiritual guide was some... Some, someone bad, you know, because she, she hesitated and then she said, we are told it will be given to you directly. You will have a clairaudient experience and you will know. A clairaudient experience. I didn't know what that meant. Okay. So do we all have spiritual guides? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you believe that some have more than others? No. I believe that we all are extensions of source energy and we all have equal access to this wonderful energy. Yeah. It's just a matter of getting into the place where you can hear it. Do you have one or two or three or ten? I see I, I when I first was thinking of Abraham I thought of them as like an individual and so fact, you call Abraham as many entities they many. refer to themselves as we they say they're a collective consciousness now and, uh, you, you must admit that this is this sounds strange it to has people. to it has to I know how I felt about it I know how I felt about it in the beginning and I have to say if it hadn't happened to me I probably well I can't say that because I was listening to Jerry Reed Seth to me and I was captivated by what I heard from Theo and Stevie who was in the room said it looked as if my heart opened I mean so who knows you yes. can't say what would have been but okay and so when you first started channeling Abraham you go into meditation and well, that what night. happened so we went home put on our bathrobe sat in a quiet room pulled the drapes sat in wingback chairs with an energy between us because it was frankly just too weird to do it together and I just focused on my breathing we set a timer for 15 minutes and right away I felt numb detached and it was an incredible sensation so the timer went off and I said let's do it again so we set the timer again and again I just breathed focused on my breathing and I couldn't tell my nose from my foot now I'm excited about whatever this is because of the feeling of it and about the third the end now you're just meditating just but, just but you love the feeling so I much I love the feeling of it and, and it's because it's better than shopping <laughs> yeah. you've just been shopping and eating so you're thinking now I'll just meditate I I didn't know what I was reaching for I what was in my mind is I'm gonna meditate every day for 15 minutes whatever that means and I'm gonna find out the name of my spiritual guide that was really what was in my mind okay got that and so right before right at the end of that what what is now about 45 minutes of meditation something breathed me it was the most incredible air drawing in air pushing out I felt like I was a billows that someone was breathing and it was the most loving incredible feeling of well-being that I had ever experienced in my life and I wanted more of it 
something breathed something you. Something breathed me. That's the only... I know now it was my first interaction with Abraham. Mm -hmm. But So we meditated. And did he say, I am Abraham? No. No, no. it's just because I couldn't have heard that. I, yeah. I, well, we, we meditated for about nine months, and nothing mm -hmm. happened except I got numb every day, and mm -hmm. I liked the sensation of it. And then... It gets weirder. One day, while we were meditating, my head just started sort of moving gently, and I loved it. It felt like flying, and the next day, the same thing. And about the next day, while my head was moving, I realized it wasn't just randomly moving. It was actually like spelling letters, like my nose was writing on a chalkboard, and I realized they were going through the alphabet, and I was on M, N, O, and I said to Jerry, I'm spelling the alphabet with my nose. And Jerry got a notebook. What did you think was going on? Well, see, when it's happening, it feels wonderful and it feels normal. It's Jerry is the one that had to be wondering what was going on. Yeah, because I would have called the doctor. He was, we might have if we hadn't experienced Theo. We okay. might have if okay. we hadn't been reading all of this wonderful information from Seth. Okay. So now we've got the combination of intellectually understanding that we've connected to something and we have no way of knowing what it is. I couldn't tell you. I only knew that it felt so good. And, and wanted more of it. And I wanted more. Okay, so you start spelling with your nose. For about two months. It was mm -hmm. awkward and mm -hmm. awful. Jerry woke and me Jerry's up in the middle of the night and propped me up in bed and would ask a question and off we'd go. It was bizarre and tiring. Bizarre and tiring. <laughs> now, when you say that you channel Abraham, and, and if it's not called channeling, what do you call it? Well... <laughs> It's what inspiration is. Okay. It's what the basketball player is doing. You know, he's trained his body to move well, but he gets into that zone and allows his broader perspective to flow through. Uh -huh. I mean, I think everybody is doing it to some extent. That's why I don't like... The word implies that only a few can do it and that it's weird and that they are the chosen ones, and it's not that way at all. Everyone has access to this broader perspective. Why do you call it Abraham? Be that's the name they gave. and. I don't repeat words that I'm hearing. You don't repeat words that you're hearing. It's not like that. Abraham gives me a block of thought, and at an unconscious level, I match that block of thought up with the physical word equivalent. Okay. So it. it's like blending their perspective and our perspective. I got it. So when they said, so they've explained that... Because they're not speaking they. Right now I'm talking like you. They're not speaking in, in English. Or they're not speaking they're language. Speaking in vibration. They're speaking in vibration. That's why musicians can translate it. That's yeah. why artists can translate it. I got that. So I get this block of Stay thought. Stay with us, XM listeners. I know. <laughs> Hang in there. It gets better. No, because no, what's so fantastic is that we're talking about this on its own vibrational frequency. Oh, yeah. XM 156. Cool. That is a vibrational frequency here. So Abraham explains that the block of thought that they offered me. Mm -hmm. that the word Abraham was the best label that I could find that best defined who they are because they are at the root of every religion because Abraham is really a part of every religion you'll yes. hear it in yes I understand it I'm yes. with you I know you are I'm right there with you <laughs> as a matter of fact when I picked up the book this is so weird I was with uh, my producers Sherry and Lisa and they were telling me about the book because I hadn't heard about the book and we were at my house reading the book together one weekend and I said, I bet you Esther has something to do with this. I bet she has somehow thought of this and is calling me in. I've been calling you in for years. In fact, when Abraham first came through me, mm -hmm. our daughter Tracy was 14. And I wasn't quite sure how I was going to explain this to Tracy. And so she'd been listening to us read the Seth books and and the first thing Tracy said was can I talk to Abraham the second thing she said is don't go on Oprah really <laughs> because because she didn't want all of her friends who watched you every day yeah to see how weird her mother was yeah yeah, yeah. I've been listening to you and people email us constantly and they say things that oh Oprah Oprah knows this Oprah's got this you know the, uh, Oprah understands this and so I, I told Jerry I said whether we're on a television show or a radio show or whether we just get to sit and play with Oprah a little bit it's all satisfying to me oh that is so wonderful yeah. but I it's not interesting I felt it yeah I felt it and I felt that when they gave me the book I realized that it had been a journey to that very moment you know what? 
Abraham talks about how our life causes us, when we know what we don't want, we know what we do want. And so we're creating this constant, they call it a vibrational escrow. It's like our future experience that happens vibrationally before we get there. And I see so many things that are in, our vi in our, all of our vibrational escrows. In other words, it's stuff that we've asked for that has already happened on some level. And if we can just get out of our own way, then all those things happen. So I think you were in my vibrational list. I think so, too. Yeah. I must have been. Yeah. Well, so a half hour's gone already. That's why I told you, you have to yeah. come back next week. Yeah. We'll be joining again with Esther Hicks on our continued soul series. And next week, I'm going to ask her to bring in Abraham. Well, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> and you'll explain that my head does not turn all the way around and yeah, things I, like that. I, 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 I'm trying not to be weirded out. I'm just going <laughs> to be cool with Abraham. You'll like Thank it. you for joining us here on XM 156. Talk to me, our soul series. So happy to have been able to talk to Esther Hicks. Her book, along with her husband, Jerry Hicks, is called The Law of Attraction on the bestsellers list right now. It's the secret, really, behind the secret. Email me with your comments and suggestions at Oprah.com or call 866-OPRAH-XM. Whoa, we're back. Continuing our soul series. Last week, we were talking to Esther Hicks. Esther's still here. Esther Hicks, author of The Law of Attraction. She and her husband, Jerry Hicks, wrote that book along with Asking It Shall Be Given, Amazing Power of Deliberate Intent. Yeah. And those of you who saw the original secret tapes, you will see Esther on the original secret tapes. As uh, we were saying last week, she's no longer on the tapes. I never let you answer why you're no longer on the tapes. We started to ask that question. Well, Rhonda said to us that because of the contractual agreement that we had with her mm -hmm. that You're supposed to get 10 percent that's what i read in the new york times it was 10 percent of the dvd sales and five percent of any profit from it and and when we began it we honestly did not believe that there would be any profit at all because it was a television series in australia mm -hmm. and our uh, intellectual property rights attorney told us not to expect anything and we didn't so mm -hmm. we were thrilled with what came from it but she said that they were not able to market it maybe because Abraham's too weird I don't know she never explained to me yeah. why they weren't able to market it with Abraham is the entity that vibrates and then she speaks there you go the vibration I got that yeah and that it would be necessary that we sign over our intellectual property rights for the material or they would have to edit us out so it was a simple decision for us Mm -hmm. And then we began receiving so many emails from so many people that were so upset that we were no longer in it. So we wrote a letter to try to explain because we didn't want people to be upset about anything. Yeah. There isn't anything. Nothing went wrong. Everything's all right. So really. there's no feud or anything. You know, I understand why Rhonda did what she did, I think. And it is better for me to try to understand because pushing against something isn't good for me. Right. And I love her. She's adorable. Yeah. And our books are really doing well. But there's no question about it. The emphasis on law of attraction has turned a lot of readers to that book. Yeah. No question about it. Yeah. I, I, I happened to see it on the New York Times bestsellers list the other day. And I went, whoa, some other people yeah. are being nice. attracted to the law of attraction. It's nice, huh? That's very nice. So... At the time when you were removed, were you or Jerry, were you upset about it in any way? It was a really painful experience for me because it felt to me like we were drawn in in one way and utilized and then sort of discarded. But feeling sorry for yourself is not a healthy state of being, and so I'm like way over it. Yeah, really? Yeah, we've just been looking at the positive aspects of it. And, and the positive aspect of it is, I'm sure you see this, lots of other people are being introduced to your work, even though you're no longer on that particular tape. In fact, two or three people said to me recently that people are saying to them they're excited about the secret, now what? And then they offer them our book because that kind of tells them yeah. what to do next. Yeah. What to do next. Yeah. What's interesting also, too, about your book, which I really liked very much and I've underlined and as I was saying last week, when my friends and I, some, when it was first given to me, we all read together, and I'd say, I'm on page 63, what page are you on? We're on page 82, let's underline that. We're all talking about it. Your book does not put as much emphasis, and I think one of the criticisms right now of The Secret is, and I can see why people criticize it, is that it's all about getting rich. There's the moment in The Secret where I think somebody puts the check on the ceiling, and they're talking about money, 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 money. 
But as I was reading the law of attraction, the law of attraction is about how everything is coming into your life. That's right. Based on the way you're thinking and not just about money. Do you think that the emphasis on money and getting rich and having boats and planes and bicycles has hurt it? Well, you know, maybe. But in fairness, as we watched her production unfold and the original secret I haven't watched the second one but mm -hmm. the original one she had a balance she had people talking about money and people talking about health and other things I think her intention was to cover everything but you know we have recordings on all of those things too and the ones that are about money are the ones that outsell all of the others that's the thing that people seem to think will solve everything we know yeah. that it doesn't I have to say too I think that's why people are so attracted to the secret because they think it can help them get rich some people do, yeah, anyway. The secret. Sure. So today we're talking about and with Esther Hicks, who's the author of uh, The Law of Attraction, and also I like Ask and It Shall Be Given. That's on my bedside right now. Not that I really need to ask for anything else. I'm doing okay. Well, you know, though, you never stop, do you? No. I mean, there's always something more. One of the things I really got from reading The Law of Attraction, uh, your version of it, is that what you can ask for and what I've been asking for and also receiving is more joy because ultimately that is the ultimate success that's it more joy that's it that's what it's all about that's and so it. to have more joy even in all the things that you already have and all the things that you already do to do those things deliberately with joy oh man that's the best of all of it isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a great ask yeah. one of the other things I liked about what you wrote in the law of attraction you and Jerry is uh, that we do not want to alter your beliefs and I w just wanted to say that because Many years ago, I was doing on my show something called Remembering Your Spirit, and I was so attacked by it. I believe that it was a way of introducing people to the best part, the higher part of mm -hmm. themselves, Remembering Your Spirit. And every day for about five minutes, we'd take a moment and we'd have people look at their lives differently, spend a quiet moment and so forth. And I received so much criticism about it because some people thought I was trying to tell them what to believe. Right. I really wasn't. I was just saying that who you are is so beautiful. Just spend some time with that and, and, and let that revolve to its high itself. But I love in the Law of Attraction, I think it's on page 21, where it says, we do not want to alter your beliefs. What does that mean? Again, I, I want you to ask Abraham that because that is them saying it. But what I hear Abraham saying to us is that everyone gets to create their own reality. And Abraham's not interested in telling us what we should create. They're only interested in showing us how we go about creating what our life path is about. Right. I'm going to ask you to, to bring him in in a moment, but I just want to You'll read be glad. That. We want you to know your value, for in the absence of that understanding, you do not attract the legacy that truly belongs to you. Because in your lack of self-appreciation, mm -hmm. you deny yourself your natural inheritance of continuous joy. Mm -hmm. Now, I read that, and I think about all the difficult things that are happening in people's lives and difficult things that have happened to me. So is it your belief or understanding that we're all here, everybody's supposed to have continuous joy? Yes. What okay. about the yin and yang of life? Well, the contrast is what helps us to define from our personal perspective what it is we want to create. And once that explodes in us, if we would just turn our attention to that, we'd get that. Mm -hmm. But somehow, most of us, it's like getting back to money, we'll say, I don't have enough money. Well, every time we know that we don't have enough money, we ask for more. And when we ask, it is given. But we keep beating the drum of, I don't have enough money. And yeah, so I, say, I said this on a show that what you see people saying all the time is, if I could only make it to the end of the month. I've heard people say that. Mm -hmm. If I could only just make it to the end of the month. And you do. Yeah. You make it to the end of the month right. and you don't have more. So are you saying that the law of attraction says that whatever you give your attention to, that's what you attract. Exactly. Knowing what we don't want helps us know what we do want. Yeah. But we keep talking about where we're at, so we don't let ourselves become a match to what life has caused us to ask for. I got that. You say also in the Law of Attraction, page 25, once you understand that all people, circumstances, and events are invited into your experience by you, through your thought, you will begin to live your life as you intended when you made the decision to come forth into this physical body. And so an understanding of the powerful law of attraction coupled with an intention to deliberately create your own life experience will ultimately lead you to the unparalleled freedom that can only come from a complete understanding and application of the art of allowing. 
it's so much fun. See, law of attraction is working all the time, whether we know that it is or not. But when we deliberately set forth an intention and we deliberately try to hold our thoughts on that by paying attention to the way we feel and guiding our thoughts that way, then to watch things begin to unfold, that's when life's really fun. I got that. Yeah. I'm talking to Esther Hicks here, who is, I'm saying today, the secret behind the secret because she was a big, big, big part, she and her husband, Jerry, of the creation of the DVD that Rhonda Burns did. Rhonda and her crews went to sit with Jerry and uh, with Esther, and uh, she was on the original tape. She's no longer on the tape, but she is here in our studio. And I'm going to ask you to channel Abraham. And let me just say before you do that, um, the reason why I wanted to do this on the radio is because I really do think that the television audience isn't ready for it. Yeah. So I, I just right. know. And so I know all the people listening, you're going to think it's a weird thing. And maybe it is a weird thing. I'm going to see for myself how weird it is. Prepare but, yourself. But I'm preparing myself. That's why I thought I would do this virgin. <laughs> I'd do my virgin run with Abraham on the radio in case some weird old thing happened. <laughs> so what happens? What is the process? Can you tell our listeners what this means? I just relax and uh, quiet my mind. I usually focus on my breathing. Are you going to um, look the same? Yeah, nothing's going to change. It'll be all right. Okay. It'll be all right. My eyes dilate is about the only thing that's different. The, the pupils does it happen every time? Can you do it? Does it happen? Do you just say, hey, Abraham, and it the, shows up? The only time that I was not ever able to bring Abraham in was when the neighbor's dog got in our chicken yard years ago and mutilated some of our chickens. And I was so upset, I couldn't relax enough to receive them. But the, So once you channel Abraham here on XM 156, once you do that, and then I'm talking to Abraham, are you hearing what I Abraham hear is? I every word, okay, but what have... it is, I don't go away, but I become more is the best way to explain it. Because tell me again what you said last week, that it's a vibrational field. Yeah, I don't repeat words. I just, they offer a vibration that because I've practiced for so many years, I tune to it easily. Mm -hmm. I think you do it too, Oprah. I think you are every bit as weird as me. You just don't use the label. And how, how do you see that I'm weird, as <laughs> How's, how's well, so? Oh, oh, I don't see you as weird. I only say weird in the sense that I believe that you are weird in the way that I'm weird in that you receive broader perspective or you'll get an impulse that when you follow it, it just at the right time, it it's exactly right. You, yes. You know? Yeah. I'm going to ask you to bring right. in Abraham. All right. You'll like it. I'll like it. We are not really as strange as all of that. <laughs> It is nice to have an opportunity to visit. So, Abraham, do I call you Abraham? Do I call you Esther? What's what's the protocol? Mm -hmm. Most call us Abraham. Some call us Esterham. Esterham. Abraham is fine. Mm -hmm. And so when I, I <laughs> this is so weird. So as I sit here on a- It's not weird from your perspective, but as you try to define it through the eyes of others, yes. you see them as seeing it as weird. And so then it feels, weird but in reality it is not weird yeah. everyone is doing this to some degree to some degree yes thank you for that clarification so may i ask you some questions about um, some of the feelings that people have after hearing that they are attracting into their lives everything that is happening so you're saying are you saying that everything happens in our life for a reason we are saying that, but differently than that, in this way. Everything happens for a reason sounds a little bit like it is an outside reason that has been assigned. We say everything is happening because of the vibration offering that you are setting forth. Everything that is coming to anyone is coming in response to what they've been thinking about. As you think a thought, it activates a vibration and as you continue to think it that vibration becomes stronger until eventually you call it a belief a belief is just a thought you keep thinking and once you have activated a vibration enough that it is dominant within your vibrational patterns then law of attraction matches it up with things like it so that's why the law of attraction is that you bring into your life that which is unto itself that is it exactly then why do such bad things happen to people who are not thinking about those bad things? Well, the best way to describe that is by saying to you that 
the thoughts that they have been thinking have the same vibrational essence. In other words, someone might say, I did not think about that specific thing. But there is no question, if something happens, what you are living always matches what you've been offering vibrationally. There are no exceptions to that. So the confusion comes in where what it means is people are offering vibrations that they don't know they're offering because they've been thinking thoughts. The thoughts are normal. It's like even what's going on in your nation today. There are so many thoughts that are fear-based and people accept them as normal, but they are not good for people to think those thoughts. For instance? For instance, as you are thinking about terrorism and worried about it coming to you, wanting to be aware of what color the terror alert is today and things of that nature. As you hold your thoughts upon those things, in time they begin to feel normal. But why shouldn't we feel a sense of terror? Because we've experienced terror in this country. That's what, what was the purpose of 9-11? Things do not happen because something outside of you is assigning you a lesson. It is that as you are living life, your response to life causes you to offer vibrations that then law of attraction responds to. So it's, it's a little tricky to say that 9-11 happened for a reason unless you understand that it was the culmination of a lot of people giving a lot of thought. In other words, it was sort of a, a, a trigger point, you might say, to people feeling powerless, large numbers of people feeling powerless over a long period of time. I ask the question because the terror alerts resulted from 9-11 yes. and that attack on our country on our beings and our sense of security yes, and our sense yes. of feeling like we were safe. And so the terror alerts are there yes. as a warning to yes. people, supposedly, to say, you're not as safe as you think you are. Yes. Yes. Well, there are all kinds of things that are happening. People have cancer and people get run over by trucks. We are certainly in agreement with you that there are things out there that are happening that if you give your attention to them, you would feel those emotions of terror or fear. But what we're suggesting is that if you are able to not just look around and take what's happening as it's given to you. So something bad happens, you have a fearful response. Something good happens, you have a joyful response. But instead, you decide how you want to tune your responses. So you become a more selective sifter. You don't just look and feel. Instead, you decide how you want to feel and then you look. So now you have control of your vibrational offering, which means now you have control of your point of attraction. Because we're all vibrational offerings. We are all vibrational beings, everything. Is. And you are attracting to yourself the vibrational frequency, the vibrational offering that you are putting out every time no exception even if you're four years old even if you are one year old even if you are in your mother's womb vibration abounds and you are vi you see what happens you are so this is where this is where we get hung up here because I don't understand and I'm sure many people listening to us don't understand how an innocent child attracts being raped an innocent child attracts being abused. An innocent yes. child tra attracts being kidnapped and butchered. The first assumption that makes it hard for you to come round to understanding is the assumption that in order to create you must have language, you must be speaking. And so if a child is not speaking then they must not be attracting. Where what is happening is you are attracting as your animals do. You, even though they do not have language, they are communicating in very powerful ways vibrationally. The question that you asked when we began, we, we want to come back around to that because it is a good basis for this. People often, when they first hear about law of attraction or that you create your own reality, most are very excited about the idea because they want control. They want control over the bad things and they want to be able to bring in more of the good things. Then soon after, as they discover that control of their own experience means control of their own thoughts, 
then they're not so sure about all of that because it's not an easy thing to control one's thought with so much stimulation around. And so that's really what you're speaking to. If there is the responsibility of a parent or a mentor, it would be to teach the child that they have guidance within. And if they are listening to the guidance within, they could not comfortably ever settle on the thoughts that would then attract something unwanted. Okay, I'm here on XM156 trying to uh, attract a very good vibration here, talking to Esther Hicks, who is uh, channeling Abraham on the show. And my my question to you, though, is not about the vibration. I understand the whole vibrational frequency yes. thing, and that's why I, I feel that in terms of the secret, that it's a great tool. We agree. It's a great tool. But I don't think that it's an answer to every single question in the world because there are many other universal laws at play. Everybody's born and everybody is going to transition. Everybody comes to Earth. Everything that comes to Earth eventually takes another form and moves through the Earth and out into wherever we go. I should ask you, where do we go? You withdraw your consciousness from this physical experience and you reemerge into non-physical. And you feel yourself as the culmination of all that you've become. It is an exhilarating experience in one fell swoop to leave behind all doubt and fear and worry and self-denial and to become in one moment the full recognized being that you are. It's important to know that you came into this body from your non-physical perspective. Mm -hmm. May I interrupt a second? Because I just thought this. Are we making too much of the whole body thing? Are we kind of caught up on it because that's what we are? Are we making too much of it? And so people say, for example, you, this person has a bad life, this person has a good life, and the way we define good life is by how many things you can have, and bad life is that you didn't have as many things. And I ask that question because as you visit different parts of the world, I see people with absolutely nothing who are far happier than most of the people that I see that have lots and lots of different things. So are we are we in the wrong frequency? Are we thinking the wrong things about what is good and what is not? Well, it isn't wrong to seek material things. You are physically manifested. You have a material body. And so it is right that you would want to surround yourself with things like that. But what happens, whether you are in, a, in an environment where there is very little stimulation about wanting things or whether you are in an environment like this where there is so much stimulation about it. The important thing to understand is that whatever life you're living, your life is causing you to define what it is you are wanting. You're constantly emitting these rockets of desire as you sift through the contrast of your experience. It's a not a complicated story to unravel and we can give it to you in a very short period of time if you're wanting it. Please do. So you are source energy, every one of you, and you make the decision to come forth into these physical bodies because you know that this leading edge experience on planet Earth is the leading edge experience, not just for man, but for that which man calls God. So as you express yourself forward into these physical bodies, the environment that surrounds you and the contrast of it helps you individually and uniquely to define what you desire. And as that desire is born within you, even before you can put words to it, it radiates from you like a rocket. And the source that was you before you were born follows that rocket and literally becomes the vibrational equivalent of every hope and desire and dream that every one of you dream. So out of the contrast is born the anew, the renewed, the expanded version of life. We like to refer to that expanded version of you as your vibrational escrow. It's who life has caused you to become. But most physical beings, even though life is causing them to become this, they stand looking at what they have rather than looking at who they have become. So they affect a separation between who they have now become and who they are letting themselves be. But the source within them always calls them toward it. That's why when you feel enthusiasm, you are on the same vibration. Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss, and we think those are the best words that have ever been offered. But sometimes you cannot get a whiff of bliss. If you are in despair, if something bad has happened, if you've witnessed something, and someone is saying you should follow your bliss, 
even though source is calling you, you can't hear it because the vibration of where you are and the vibration of source is different enough that you can't hear it. Not that it isn't calling, but you can't hear it. So, do you know what the call of source sounds like? People say it must sound like harps and angels. No. They say it depends on where you are. Mm -hmm. If you are in appreciation, the call of source feels like elation. If you are in despair, if you feel powerless, the call of source feels like rage. If you are in rage or anger, the call of source then feels like frustration. In other words, it's a slight improvement from where you are is what the call of source always sounds like. So 9-11 came out of so many people feeling so powerless for so long that the next logical step for them was something we always say we we want to call you through the rage and revenge so that you don't act on it but it is a logical place to be if you've ever been depressed you know how much better you feel when you get mad and your friends don't want you to be mad they liked you better when you were depressed but you've got to admit at least you're breathing now you do feel better so everything about coming into alignment with who you are is about closing that gap between whatever you're focused upon in your now experience and who you really are. Well this has been very interesting, very interesting. Thank you Esther Hicks, thank you Abraham. But it's time to wrap this chapter of our exclusive Soul Series here on Oprah and Friends XM 156. Mm, fascinating to me. Next week uh, more on how we can apply the law of attraction in our own lives, which I know lots of people are talking about these days. And does it work or doesn't it work? And does it make you a victim if bad things happen? And find out if there are other universal laws that also will help us begin to live a more purposeful life. Oh, hey, welcome back. We're still talking to Esther Hicks. I can't get enough of her who's written the book, The Law of Attraction. Those of you who are stimulated by The Secret or have questions about The Secret, that's a great follow-up book to open the door, expand your thinking, uh, really understand and to be able to begin to put into practice The Law of Attraction. Last week, Esther was here, channeling Abraham. I have to tell you, I couldn't tell the difference between you and Abraham. I cool. have to tell you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You don't find him a lot smarter? No. I think you've been listening to him for so long. You're... <laughs> You're, you're getting it yourself. I think I do have it. But they do have a clarity that I don't have. A clarity. I think I notice that there is a difference in articulation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the sometimes the words feel a little mm -hmm. sharper, more succinct, more mm -hmm. direct. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I feel. What does that feel like to you when you're doing that? It's the best thing I ever do. Mm -hmm. Them flowing through me. It's like flying. Mm -hmm. I love the sensation of it. Really? It's the feeling of utter well-being, and it's the feeling of knowing everything. Yeah. Yeah. And you say utter well-being, because how do you know what your state of being is? To know? me, it's the absence of anything that's bothering me. Yeah. That utter well-being is just that feeling, you know, that everything's fine and that everything's all right. And it's a feeling of elation. So as I sit here talking to you, I wondered when I read yours and Jerry's book on uh, the law of attraction, which is now on the New York Times bestseller list, this is written so beautifully through the words of Abraham that you say that you channel. And I'm wondering, because you know all of this now, do you ever have a bad day? Yes. But well, you attracted that to yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. And when I have a bad day, I feel guilty, which makes the day worse. And then I remember Abraham saying, you are where you are. You know, just reach for a thought that feels better. They say, you can't sit your radio dial on 6.30 a.m. and hear what's being broadcast on 98.7 FM. Or XM1. Yeah, or that, or that. Yeah. So when something happens and I, you focus on it, you, you feel what it is. But we yes. have choices. You say on page 49 of the Law of Attraction that your attention to anything is drawing it closer to you. So that means even when you're saying, and I loved it when you say, try not to think about snow. Everybody listening right now, don't think about snow. And immediately you think about snow falling, snow on a mountain, snow, snow. And you're saying in the book, The Law of Attraction, that the vibration doesn't hear no or don't. The vibration hears snow. Every subject's two subjects. It's like picking up a stick. And on one end of it is what the absence of what you want. And on the other end of it is what you want. So you pick up the, the subject and you activate it and depending on how you feel is which end of the stick you're on. It's like 
Am I really thinking about my lover coming or am I noticing that he hasn't come yet? It's the subject is my lover, yeah. but if I'm thinking about him coming, I feel high and happy. If I'm thinking about the fact that I have no idea where he is or if he'll ever show up, I feel terrible. Yeah, so that's why you speak about and have written about the law of deliberate creation. Yes. Because I think for most people, they can't even figure out what it is they really want. And I say this to also my friends and people who work with me all the time. Don't say you do want something, but then subconsciously, the the layer is that when you go beneath the surface of it, is eh, I'm not so sure I'm really going to get it. Eh, I'm not so sure I can really have it, because well, that's then what is going to be working for you. That's right. The universe is not responding to our words; it's responding to the way we feel. So the more you think about, for example, you say, "I don't want to think about it. I'm sick, but I don't want to think about it. I'm worried about my child, but I don't want to think about it." The what best, happened? The best example that I've seen of that, a lady was talking to Abraham and she said, I'm in such pain, I have arthritis in my hips and every moment I feel uncomfortable. How can I think about a good feeling body when my body hurts so much? And Abraham said, you have to separate what's happening from the way you feel about what's happening. In other words, they said you're in a painful arthritic body and you feel frightened or you're in a painful arthritic body and you feel hopeful. And the difference between hope and fear is the difference between recovery or not. So the way to begin to use this as a tool to do, as you and Jerry say in the book, uh, Law of Attraction, to lead a more purposeful life is to follow your feelings toward that which is good. You have to find a way to quantify the journeys. It's like we, we, Jerry and I drive from Phoenix to San Diego and we know how to get there. It's 400 miles, we head west, we never feel discouraged, we know we're gonna make it even though we're not happy out there in the desert, we can't wait till we get to San Diego, we never worry about making it or not. We don't get halfway and lose our way and then fight with each other over whose fault it is that we're not there and then go back to Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma and then say San Diego's an impossible dream or incurable because that journey we understand but sometimes people who are sick who want to be well they're well along their way to wellness vibrationally Abraham said 99.99% .99 of every creation is completed vibrationally before there's any physical evidence of it so we're well along the way to our recovery but then because we can't see the evidence of it we go in for another test or whatever which gives us bad news and then we turn around and go back to Phoenix so Esther Hicks author of uh, the law of attraction that we're sitting here talking about here today so the source is calling you and it's up to you to be able to figure out what the calling is or is it up to you just to decide well, what see, it is you want it's like Kate is five we played with her in the hotel room a couple of months ago she hit a little car and then w it was our job to find it and she'd say you're getting warmer you're getting colder you're mm -hmm. getting warmer and we found it every time and it's the same sort of thing somehow we've got separated from our understanding that an improved feeling is moving toward source that which feels good and I think but but says, couldn't that mean though Esther couldn't that also mean that there are some sick people out there you know I don't know what Abraham would say about that but there are some sick people out there who feel good hurting other people and that as they feel they feel good as they're moving in the direction of doing harm to other people Abraham tells the story this way so Imagine taking your boat. Abraham is the entity that she channels if you're just Sorry. listening for the first time, okay? Take your boat down to this river's edge with your paddles in, and they say most people deliberately turn the boat upstream and begin paddling very hard. And they say, why don't you just turn and go with the flow? And people say, well, that just seems lazy. And what Abraham's wanting us to understand is that everything that we want is downstream. I'm smiling because I say that to my, my people all the time. And well, I don't have Abraham. And I, how did I know that if I don't have Abraham? Well, I'm not sure you don't have Abraham. Okay. I know that. I, that but, I, but I use that exact phrase. I always say that there is a current to everybody's life and there is a flow in your own life. And if you're struggling, it means you're moving upstream. Turn around, find the flow. And you don't even have to turn the boat and paddle downstream. Just let go of the oars. The current will carry you. That's what and, I always say. And see, so you know. So that stream is what's calling us. And here's what I think goes wrong with so many people, is that when we're in a really strong negative place, yes. 
we don't have access to joy. We don't have access to elation. The vibrations are too far apart. Yeah. But we do have access to something that feels a little better. And if we could just know that the thought that feels a little better is a step in the right direction, and then the next thought that feels a little better is the next step oh, in the I right direction. It. You're getting warmer. You're getting warmer. Exactly. You're getting warmer. It's Kate saying, you're getting warmer, you're exactly. getting warmer. Yeah. So that's how you know. That's how you know. It feels better. that To move toward who you've become always feels better. To widen that gap always feels worse. How does the law of attraction mesh with religious beliefs? Because I think that's one of the things that when we first did the secret on the show, one of the questions from one of our viewers was, well, where is God in all of this? And I said, God is the secret. God is, God is <laughs> at the heart of, of everything that is. So law of attraction is responding to our thoughts. Mm -hmm. and, and our thoughts equal our point of attraction. But now consider this. So we're source energy. We're born into this physical body. The contrast causes us to ask for this and ask for this and ask for this. So there's this vibrational escrow that's amassing. And the source energy part of us doesn't stay over here in the contrast. It rides that rocket and becomes the non-physical vibrational equivalent of what we're asking for. So God has expanded through us and is standing there in that expanded beingness calling us toward it. When we move in the direction of it, we feel better. When we move in opposition to it, we feel worse. How did we get so far off course? I think it's because well-meaning people, it's like our, our mothers say, listen to what I say instead of listen to how you feel. Mm -hmm. I think it's because when somebody adores you and they focus on you and they hold you as their object of attention and because they're adoring you they're connected to source and they're flooding yeah. that all over you it feels so good and then you want more of that from them yeah. but then if they're not connected then you don't get that you get whatever it is that, yeah. that they're offering but this is so wonderful that's why you know I have 151 girls at my school I know and one of the beautiful things about raising children it's so amazing how I attracted this to myself because I used to say the reason I would want to have children is so that I could begin to teach them the power of themselves just like in the Wizard of Oz which I think is one of the greatest spiritual stories you've it always is. had the power you've always had it my dear the Glinda the Good Witch says and to be able to let them know that they come from the source as you call it and that there's a part of them that because you do come from that that you can do amazing things in your life. And so now I have this school and all of my girls meditate. Before they go into their tests, they meditate. And before they do any sports games, they meditate. They all meditate. And they have their own religious beliefs. We have Muslims and Hindu and we have Christian girls. And so all the girls have their separate religious beliefs. But then all together on Sunday afternoon, we all do yoga together. And I was in a yoga class with these 12 year old girls talking about the benefits of meditation and how because they've now learned it, they, that they can go inside themselves before they take a test and calm themselves. And when I see that, I realize that we have all been taught how not to trust ourselves. And my goal with my school and these girls is to teach them how to begin to trust themselves and self-empowerment yeah to trust themselves and also trust that which is greater than themselves right. to use the source there is not anything that's greater than us when we're aligned with who we really are yeah that's what I teach yeah. the girls yeah. that when you are Gary Zukav calls it authentic power when your personality is aligned with your soul that that is authentic power Perfect. when you are in alignment yeah. with your source yeah. yeah was there a moment after you were taken off the secret tape because we said that in the previous shows you were on the original tapes and now you're not were, were you upset because it's since it's been such a great success maybe I felt some uh, you could call it jealousy initially because I didn't understand what happened but then the more I thought about it the more I realized that the world wants the message but they might not be ready for the messenger and then meaning you meaning Abraham Abraham so why didn't you just why why didn't you and don't you just want to speak as yourself well I think that when Abraham flows through me there's a clarity that is beyond anything that I can give Powerful I ask you this thing. because the reason why I'm not talking to you on television right now is because I know there are too many people who would be weirded out by the whole prospect of Abraham and so in that way maybe it hinders you it does I think and and uh, 
I think maybe. See, now I've seen the secret. This has opened something for me because yeah. it makes me realize I can visit with you. I think I can express the message. There's hundreds of thousands of people that have been listening to our recordings for I know a long this. time. I know this. So if I were on television and I were doing the teaching when they're accustomed to hearing it from Abraham, they'd probably be all right with it. But I'm sure they would say, where's Abraham? But you must know that the fact that you talk about Abraham and that you channel Abraham and want him to speak through you, want them, sorry, want them to speak through you, that that makes people feel weird. Yeah, I know. I don't blame them. It made me feel weird, too. But so what do you not do? just weird? They think you're a kook. So what? So what? Do you I, do? I'm not calling you a kook, know, but you know what I'm saying. They're so what do you do you're kook. when you're having this phenomenal experience where source energy is pouring through you? It's just what is what's happening, well, so what do you do? I don't know. This is so interesting. I was talking to some friends about this recently, and I was thinking that too bad I won't be around, but maybe I can channel myself here 100 years from now, because yeah. I think 50 years from now, I think, first of all, The Secret, your books, all of that are elevating conscious to the point where this won't be so weird. Yeah. Even a decade from now, right. this won't be I so agree. weird. 25 years from now, you know, it won't be so weird. Now, I'm going to take this to another level of weirdness. And I, if Jerry were doing this, I'd be mad at him, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right after we met Abraham, we were living in Phoenix, and I was receiving them, and we were having a wonderful time. And Jerry was teaching from the book Think and Grow Rich, and he was telling the story about a sharecropper's daughter who said, my mammy's got to have 50 cents. And she just stepped right up in the face of this man and demanded it, and he reached in his pocket and gave it to her, which he couldn't believe that had happened. And while I'm sitting there in the audience... I feel consumed with this energy that I recognize must surely be Napoleon Hill. It was strong, and he was so excited about Jerry's delivery of this story. So as soon as Jerry got off the stage, I said, Jerry, I believe that Napoleon Hill has something that he wants to say to you. And we went to the car, sat in the back seat of the car in this Napoleon parking Napoleon Hill? Nap I know. I'm sorry, but it's, okay. you know, no one's dead, Okay. you know. It, and so Jerry has activated this by his lively expression from this book. And so this energy is now interested in what we're talking about. And Jerry asked Napoleon Hill, what would you have done differently? And Napoleon Hill said, I would have told where I got it from. And Jerry said, why didn't you? And he said, the book would have never been published. So then, Napoleon Hill, author of Think and Grow Rich. Yes. So then, years go by. We receive Abraham. I had never heard the word law of attraction. I had never read any of this stuff. Abraham encouraged me not to read because they didn't want me to worry about where I was getting anything. So we're bipping along. We're doing our thing. And then my dad died. And so we went out to the funeral. And Jerry doesn't go to the funeral. He goes to the bookstore. And he finds this book, Think and Grow Rich. And it's a weird looking book. And he picks it up. And it's the original manuscript that it was just now being published. So he buys this original manuscript, then he buys a copy of the book that he had been reading all these years and compares it line by line and every reference to vibration, everything that's vibrational, everything that, that talked about the ethers, all the stuff that's like Abraham stuff is edited out, out of the book. The original book. So Jerry and I just thought it was so funny. So now here we've come full circle. We're interacting with Ron. And the reason it was edited out is because of people the can't can't receive just it. Just what you're just saying. They're can't, not ready for it. The, and so, so then we meet Rhonda. She, she's Rhonda Burns, The Secret. Listening yes. to it, and now she's making a movie called The Secret. And as they are in the editing production, early in our process with them, we get this correspondence from her that Rhonda's been told that they have to edit out the word vibration. And they, so they edited the word vibration. And Jerry and I said, 70 years later, we're still editing out the word vibration. You're right, Oprah. The, the reason is because people might not be ready to understand yeah. that they are source energy and physical bodies. Yeah, and that we are vibration. We are vibration. Now, in your book, The Law of Attraction, you say an all-inclusive, never-changing set of rules doesn't exist. When I read that, I thought, well, geez, when people read that, they're going to think, well, this is in conflict with Christian teachings, specifically the Ten Commandments. Those Christian are teachings are in conflict with Christian teachings, too. Yes. You know, they're... Well, I can't argue that. But specifically, I'm just talking about the law of attraction saying that rules change, that people evolve, and so rules also should be evolving with, with people. Then, When someone stood before Jesus dripping their illness, he did not see them in their sickness. He saw them in their wholeness. He saw their vibrational escrow. He saw who they really are. Mm -hmm. And he held that in his mind so powerfully that he dominated the vibration of their being so that they were well and mm -hmm. then he said go forth and tell no one yes yeah, and that's why you say in the book also 
you say that the greatest thing, which that really was a sentence that changed me, that Abraham said through you, um, that the greatest gift you can give to someone is your highest expectation of them. So when you see the best in them. Because when you see the best in someone, you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on to source energy. So it's not just you looking at them. You're flooding all over them with source energy. And by source energy, you mean what most people call God? Yeah, Abraham doesn't use the word God because they say it just makes you think of what you already think about. Uh, God, And yes. what they think is different yeah, than yeah. what most people you're, do. It but. makes you think of God in the religious context. Yeah. yeah. I feel so much more closer to Christ as a result of what I've learned from Abraham than I ever knew before because I feel like I feel how he felt. I feel like I know what he knew. When he says the kingdom of heaven is within you, he, mm -hmm. he was talking about this yeah. connection to source energy. I would have to say that too for all the people who feel that it conflicts with your religion. You know, I obviously was raised not just Christian but Baptist and, you know, still hold to my Christian beliefs. And I would say that everything that I've learned metaphysically has really only enhanced what I believe yeah. about that which we call God. Do you have time for a really quick story? Sure. We were doing some telephone consultations a few years ago and there was a woman talking to Abraham and what she really wanted was a fortune telling and Abraham's a teacher. They don't tell fortunes, they try to empower people and so she wasn't really having a very good time. And so Abraham said to her, let's pick some subjects and activate them and then they'll show up in your experience and then you'll know your power. Well she wasn't having any of it. She said like what? And they said like blue glass and then they described different blue glasses. They said a feather. Think about feathers on birds, on hats. Think about butterflies. And she wasn't having any of it. The consultation, Think about them and then see how they show up in your think life. Think about them. And, and, but she, Abraham was just wanting to get her to talk about them with them long enough that it would activate the vibration of them. So she got off the phone and I said to Jerry, she'll probably ask for her money back because I could tell that she did, was not having a good time with Abraham because they wouldn't tell her her fortune. So then we were in La Jolla and we went to George's restaurants, which we found because yes, of you yes, I and it. ate that wonderful soup. So anyway, we were on our way to George's and we parked the car, got out of the car and right in front of me was a store that I had not been in before and we got clear in the back of the store there was a wall of blue glass unlike anything I'd ever seen in my life and I didn't make the connection between the consultation but there it was so then we went to George's and had lunch then we walked down to the cove and we were walking across the grass right before you get down there and there was a flurry of butterflies that surrounded us that was so intense we had to stop talking to keep from eating them and then all of a sudden I see a little boy running across the lawn and he came right up to me and handed me a pigeon's feather that he'd picked up off the ground. And when that happened, you, I was a stranger, me a stranger. And when that happened, I realized that all three of those things that Abraham had deliberately activated in that woman's vibration and apparently in mine, within an hour of that consultation, the universe had delivered them all to me. Because when we activate something without resistance, it comes fast. Boy, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. If you activate something without resistance, that means also without doubt. So start with something easy. Don't work, don't work on the boyfriend that you've been trying to get for 20 years or the money that you've never Well, that, I have to tell you, the first time we were started talking about this, that's what my best friend Gail says. Well, I don't know how come I don't have a boyfriend then. That's why. I don't know. Really? That's why, because cause I don't know why I don't have a boyfriend. Is the Where is he? He's not here is the dominant vibration. Oh, I'm going to tell her that. She just needs to see I, him. I, the, honest to goodness, when we started talking about this, she goes, well, if the law of attraction works, then I should have a man by now. No, because her vibration says, I don't have a man. Where is he? Where's my stuff? And he's over there in vibrational escrow. She's been adding to him. He is so magnificent and so beautiful. And in the moment she drops those oars, he'll flow right into her experience. Really? Absolutely. So tell me again, what does she need to do? She needs to. She needs to stop not, work, stop talking about him not being there and start saying things like, well, maybe he's coming and I'd like him to come and I believe that he's out there and wouldn't it be nice if I well, she does. Well, uh, she did say that on the road trip. I believe he's coming. I believe he's there. And so when that is a, the strongest vibration within her, he will be there. But as long as he's not coming, she's holding him away with those other thoughts. So you're saying start small. Start with something easy meaning something that you're not already worried about so and start with that what because you're testing it you're just testing it well you can test it but you can test it I would test the law of attraction I would deliberately activate things in my mind and then I would watch law of attraction bring them 
yeah. then you'll trust the law, and then you'll start to feel worthy, and then you can start shifting your vibration on the things that you've been beating the drum of that aren't working for yeah. so long. So I also understand it in terms of, because you know you've watched me for years, those of you who are listening heard me go up and down and up and down the scale. I understand why the struggle, that just exactly the word struggle with mm-hmm. weight mm-hmm. has made it such an issue mm-hmm. because of the struggle. Exactly. And so in order to be freed of it, you must release the struggle of it. No longer fear potatoes <laughs> or potato chips. No, they're going to make me fat. They're going to make me fat. As you're eating them, they're going to make me fat. Or getting on the scale. As everybody who's listening, you've done this. You get on the scale and you feel worse. The numbers make you feel worse. And then you decide, well, okay, I'm just going to eat to make myself feel better. Yeah. So you can't get the thing that you are worried about because the worry is the indication that you're offering the vibration of the lack of it. Okay. Worry, worry isn't keeping you from it. It's your indication of where you're vibrating. Because the thought creates a vibration, and the good thoughts create good vibrations. Let's see. How can I say that? Good, the, good, good vibrations. The vibration, what we're always feeling is the vibrational interplay between who we really are and who we're being in this moment. So life caused me to want to be prosperous let's say uh-huh. but I'm beating the drum of I can't pay my bills today okay the emotion that I'm feeling is the relationship it's the vibrational discord between who I really am and where I'm being in this moment mm-hmm. so by reaching for a thought that feels better I tune myself up that vibrational scale into vibrational alignment with the money that is waiting for me or the lover that's waiting for me or whatever, whatever. Is waiting for you so what I've been saying for years, I've known this because when people ask me, you know, how did this happen to you? How do you have this life? I have understood that I am where I am and who I am because I really believed when I was a child, I was told that I was God's child. I used to call him my daddy. Jesus, he's my daddy. So I really did believe everything that I was taught about the kingdom of heaven is yes. at hand and asking yes. you shall be given yes. and greater things yes. than these that I have done. Yes. You, can, I really, really did believe that because... That's really all I had to believe. Yeah. So I grew up thinking that I could I could be whatever God wanted me to be. Isn't that a nice thing for you to know? Don't you want everybody to know that? Yes. I do too. Yes. I do too. Yes. And that's why we are where yeah. we are. Yeah. It's a joy just to have yeah. been able to yeah. share this time with you. It was great fun for me. Thank you yeah. for coming yeah. Yeah. and bringing Abraham and the gang. Yeah. <laughs> They had fun, too. Esther Hicks, The Law of Attraction, on the bestsellers list right now. It really deeply defines, explains, and opens the door to all of the notions of the secret. So I'm really happy to have been able to have the book. I I underlined it so many times. I now need a new book. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, too. On our Soul Series.